What you're seeing here is not an X10 being rolled through a gate. That is a G26, the second phase of the Navajo test program. The X10 was proving out the aerodynamics and shape of this vehicle. But this vehicle was quite different than an X10. It didn't have turbojet engines. It had ramjets. Engines optimized to fly at Mach 3. Its structure was quite different too. More stainless steel, titanium, less aluminum. It was heavier. It looked bulkier. Not quite as clean or as nice as an X-10. Of course its function was again quite different. It was supposed to be rocketed airborne on the back of a large liquid fuel booster. Reach a speed of Mach 3, discard the booster, and then fly out to either a dive-in location somewhere 2,500 miles down the missile test range or fly out a thousand miles turn around fly back and land at the skid strip using the automatic system that the X-10s had proven out This footage is of the first G-26. Here we see it being raised and then lowered onto the back of that large liquid fuel booster. The ramjets of the G-26 were the largest that have ever been flown in the Western world, possibly the largest ever flown in the world. Four feet in diameter. The rocket engines used by the Navajo G-26 were practically revolutionary in their own right. The technology was developing so fast, in fact, that the G-38 booster was more powerful and more sophisticated. Regardless of its sophistication and its special features, the G-26s had a number of problems. The major one being its APU, which was constantly malfunctioning. However, on November 7th, 1956, the first G-26 was ready for launch. A lot was riding on G-26 number one. The program was behind schedule, and the competition in the form of the Atlas was catching up with them very rapidly. Almost immediately after ignition, the engineers knew something was wrong. This footage, taken from the blockhouse, shows the vehicle beginning to oscillate drastically. A simple mistake had been made in the creation of the autopilot, and several million dollars in vehicle was destroyed. Some stories state that a gyro had not been installed in the autopilot system in the pitch control unit. Others say the gyro had been installed backwards and all the inputs were turning into a negative response. Either way, it was a bucking bronco just waiting to rip itself apart. The second flight of a G-26 would not occur until 1957. Though the second flight was more successful than the first flight, 
the vehicle still had to be destroyed within a small time frame after takeoff. Thus a lot began riding on vehicle number three, the first of the inertial navigation G-26s. This flight was so important, North American covered it from at least five different angles. A fourth G-26 flight was completed in June of 1957, but again it was not completely successful. Thus in July of 1957 the program was cancelled in favor of the Atlas Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Following this the remaining G-26s were launched as part of the Fly 5 program. It was here that the G-26s would work properly, reaching altitudes of 77,000 feet, speeds of over Mach 3, and in the case of one flight in particular, the vehicle would reach a distance of 1,000 miles for a sustained Mach 3 flight of 40 minutes. This accomplishment would not be matched by a manned aircraft until the mid-1960s.